Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Wagstaff, and this is Self-Supervised Scale Recovery for Monocular Depth and Ego Motion Estimation, presented at the IROS 2021 Virtual Conference. In this work, we build upon the self-supervised framework that jointly learns to predict depth and ego motion from a stream of monocular camera images. Although this system, which is trained by minimizing a photometric reconstruction loss, has seen many improvements recently, Scale ambiguity is still an issue that leads to the depth and ego motion predictions being inconsistent with other measurements that contain metric information. Our contribution to this system is a scale recovery module that allows the networks to regress scaled or metric depth and ego motion predictions. To do so, we enforce the camera height over the ground plane to be consistent with the known camera height during training. In this video, I will discuss our scale recovery module in detail and will demonstrate its effectiveness through a series of experiments. Self-supervised learning of depth and ego motion was initially proposed by Zhao et al. in 2017, but significant improvements have been made recently that build upon the baseline system. These systems are advantageous for a number of reasons. Primarily, no ground truth labels, which can be arduous to collect, are required during training. Not only does this simplify the data collection procedure, but it also allows for our system to be continually retrained as new data is collected. This is important for guaranteeing accuracy in real-world applications where the test environment differs from the initial training distribution. Furthermore, depth networks are able to produce dense or per-pixel predictions without requiring additional hardware such as stereo cameras or LiDAR. Finally, Data-driven approaches have potential to outperform classical systems in challenging environments with adverse conditions such as image blur, dynamic objects, and complex lighting changes. Despite these advantages, the self-supervised system has a number of limitations that need to be addressed. Of particular importance to our work is the issue of scale factor ambiguity that is inherently present in monocular solutions. In our system, this ambiguity leads to two issues. First, the scale factor will have an offset from unity, and further, will be inconsistent across independent images. This is otherwise known as scale drift. Although recent methods aim to address these issues, we note that there are major drawbacks here. To address scale ambiguity, Goddard et al. use stereo camera losses, which incorporate metric information through the known camera baseline. However, since stereo data is not available at test time, this is a major limitation that does not allow for online retraining. We will demonstrate that our scale recovery loss resolves metric scale without requiring any stereo images. To address scale inconsistency, BN et al. implement a depth consistency loss that enforces depth predictions from nearby frames to be consistent with each other. Although this encourages a more uniform scale factor, we note that this issue of scale inconsistency is not yet fully solved. We will demonstrate that our scale recovery loss further improves the scale consistency over this depth consistency loss. So, the primary question we aim to answer is the following. Can we produce scaled or metric depth and ego motion predictions from monocular images in a self-supervised manner? Our hypothesis is that we can incorporate a scale recovery loss that enforces that the estimated camera height be equal to the known camera height for all samples in our dataset. To do so, we make the assumption that the camera height is known and constant, which is the case for most wheeled robots. First, we outline the baseline self-supervised system and the general loss formulation used to train it. We employ two separate networks, a depth network, which provides a dense depth prediction for a target image, and an ego motion network that takes a pair of images, namely the target image and a nearby source image, and outputs the six degree of freedom pose change between frames. Using these quantities and the known camera intrinsics, we can reconstruct the target image from pixels of the source image using what's known as a spatial transformer. Then our photometric reconstruction loss compares the reconstructed image with the target image. Through backpropagation, the loss is minimized by updating the weights of the depth and ego motion networks. Essentially, the more accurate our depth and ego motion predictions become, the better we can reconstruct the target image, assuming there are no lighting changes in dynamic objects within the scene. As I mentioned previously, however, this system remains unscaled and is prone to scale drift. We propose a novel scale recovery module that can be added to this baseline system with three main components. First, we must extract the ground plane from the image, which we do using a novel ground plane segmentation network. Once the in-plane pixels are determined, 
Using the predicted depth for each pixel, we can determine the normal vector to the plane along with the camera offset. Finally, a scale recovery loss enforces the measured camera height to be similar to the known camera height. Adding to our baseline system, we now see how our scale recovery module works in practice. We add the plane segmentation network, which outputs per pixel weights, W, indicating the likelihood of that pixel belonging to the ground plane. Then we estimate the ground plane parameters, namely the normal direction and the plane offset, which happens to be the camera height. Finally, our scalar recovery loss enforces this measured camera height to be similar to the known camera height. By minimizing this loss, the depth network weights are updated in order to adjust the scale of the depth predictions. In turn, we expect that by changing the scale factor of the depth predictions, the scale factor of the translation predictions will naturally change in order to continue to minimize the main photometric reconstruction loss. Next, we discuss how we train our ground plane segmentation network, which is also trained in a self-supervised manner. To do so, for every training image, we first extract a known fixed ground plane region from the bottom center of the image. Using the pixel coordinates in this region and a pre-trained unscaled depth network, we determine the 3D coordinates of every pixel. Then we fit a plane using these coordinates to determine the per image normal direction and the unscaled camera offset H. Then we can minimize the following loss function in order to train our segmentation network. This loss function has two terms. The first computes the distance from the plane for every pixel in the image and is weighted by the plane segmentation network output w hat, which produces values between 0 and 1. Essentially, we can minimize this term by having the network downweight the pixels that are off plane. Second, we add a regularization term that encourages the network outputs to be close to 1. This prevents the trivial solution of the network producing zeros for all image pixels. Essentially, balancing these terms causes the network to learn to identify on-plane pixels where the offset to the ground plane is small. Note that once our plane segmentation network has been trained by minimizing this loss, we freeze the weights and then use the fixed network to output plane segmentation predictions, which can be used to extract the camera height for our main scale recovery loss. Once we have trained a plane segmentation network, we can use its predictions to estimate the camera height over the said ground plane. To do so, we use a weighted least squares plane fitting procedure. Essentially, this is fitting a plane using every pixel in the image, but the off-plane pixels have a weight near 0, and the on-plane pixels have a weight near 1, as specified by our segmentation network. The solution to 1 gives us the normal direction of the plane, which can be used to compute the estimated camera height. Finally, the measured camera height is the input to our camera height loss, which we minimize to recover our metric scale. When implementing this loss, we found that there is actually one major flaw with this scale recovery formulation that I just presented. The issue is that for all off-plane pixels, the plane segmentation weights are approximately zero. This means that the camera height is only a function of on-plane pixels. As a result, our network can minimize this camera height loss by only updating the scale factor for the on-plane pixels. We found this to be the case. After training using this scale recovery loss, the depth predictions for the ground plane appropriately shifted, but the depth values for all other pixels were largely unaffected. Next, I'm going to show you how we resolved this problem. To address this issue, we replaced the camera height loss with a depth scaling loss. To implement this new loss, we first compute the current scale factor of our depth prediction and then create a set of target depth values, which are essentially the current depth prediction rescaled with the current scale factor. Our depth scaling loss directly compares the current depth prediction with the scaled depth labels. Effectively, this is just a reformulation of the camera height loss that equally affects all pixels within the image rather than just the on-plane pixels. Note that to prevent any redundant solution, we have to remove the gradient from the scaled labels before optimizing with gradient descent. The nice thing about this reformulation is that we can do the exact same thing to scale the ego motion network predictions. To do so, we take the same scale factor and then generate scaled translation labels by rescaling the current translation prediction. Then our translation scaling loss compares the current prediction with the generated label. During training, we jointly minimize these two losses along with the rest of our self-supervised losses to produce accurate and metrically scaled depth and ego motion predictions. 
As shown in this figure, during training, the scale factor quickly converges to unity within the first epoch. By the end of training, the variance of the scale factor further decreases as our networks become more consistent. For more details about our training procedure, we refer the viewer to our paper. Following training, we evaluated our system through three primary experiments, which we will discuss next. First, we evaluated our scale recovery module by comparing it with two alternative forms of scale recovery, supervised learning with ground truth pose supervision and the stereo image-based left-right consistency loss of Goddard et al. Looking at the results table, we can see that all forms of scale recovery produce very similar results that are very close to unity. However, ours does not require ground truth or stereo images, and thus is the only one that can be used for online retraining. Looking at the scale factor across Kitty Sequence 9, we can additionally see how the overall scale consistency is improved compared with the baseline approach in orange. Specifically, we can see that our observed scale factor has a very small variance, whereas the baseline approach fluctuates significantly from frame to frame. Looking at the results of our visual odometry experiments, our approach has a similar accuracy to other recent learning-based approaches. However, these approaches compute a constant scale factor using ground truth information in order to evaluate their accuracy. Conversely, we do not use any scaling at test time, since our predictions are already metrically scaled. We also compare our method with DNet. DNet is a very similar method to ours, as they also extract the ground plane and camera height, and then compute a per image scale factor. Rather than incorporating this information into a loss function, however, they simply scale their estimate at test time with the estimated scale factor. We show that our method outperforms theirs, and we attribute this to our scale recovery loss promoting scale consistency during training. Lastly, we present our results on domain adaptation. This experiment demonstrated how our self-supervised loss formulation is able to account for out-of-distribution data through online network retraining. Here, we initially train our networks using data from the Oxford robot car dataset. We then retrain our networks for a single epoch using Kitty data, and then evaluate how this retraining improves overall performance. Looking at the results table, we can see that using our scale recovery loss during training allows for substantial improvements in accuracy over the initial models trained solely on Oxford robot car data. As future work, there are things we would like to investigate in order to improve our system further. First, to remove a source of error, uncertainty can be incorporated into the training procedure to account for small changes in camera height that can arise from vehicle motion. Additionally, we would like to see how our system can be modified to work with images collected on a drone. Here, the camera height may change over time, but if an altimeter is present on the drone, our scalar recovery losses could still be used. Finally, we are currently investigating how inertial data can be incorporated into the self-supervised training procedure. Since IMEs are a source of metric information, they can be used for scale recovery. Thanks a lot for listening. For more information, please feel free to read our paper and check out our code online. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions about this work.